Hi everyone, uh, I'm going to show you how I made my uh, inches uh, and uh, twin cheese and twin cheese for uh, Nina's uh, group in, on Facebook, Nina's uh, Argonaut Prompts and more. Uh, several acts about how I made them. Basically the same way Nina did, so I don't have a lot to add to this process. But I'm going to show you what, uh, how I made them. Uh, I made the uh, four series. Two are I already sent one for my swap body for this uh, month uh, prompt, and one is uh, on its way to Trinidad to Nimi. So Nimi, it's on its way. <laughs> uh, so I was left with the, these two, and I still got. Uh, left pieces that I haven't used yet so I'll uh, run through it uh, as, as quickly as I can because I, I I prefer to talk to you about this texture and how you make it uh, not only for this but you can do the same things when you are altering books altering uh, boxes and even in your art journal so basically i've got here um watercolor a uh, paper that i've and these are the stencil i've used uh, when i made my inches twinches and trenches this one which is like um like a sticker which is nice uh, but it's very delicate and it was a uh, quite difficult to work with I, I'm not going to use this again for this kind of job and when you do uh, this kind of texture for uh, th something that you know that you are going to cut down to little pieces you need a stencil with little details like this one or this one because a stencil with large holes I'm going to get one out just so you will understand what I'm talking about if I pick something like this when I'll cut it to inches two inches and two inches you won't see anything because the shapes are too large for it so you need a stencil with a fine and a lot fine details, fine pattern uh, I hope I'm uh, explaining myself uh, quite uh, good when I made uh, mine I took a page and I started putting the stencils next to each other something like that and Sometimes I've waited because I wanted to to have a, a lot of detail next to each other and here I have too much space. So I would put down my modeling paste, wait for it to dry rem and uh, then put another pattern, another pattern and then the next. And I've used my my modeling paste that, that I make uh, I don't have a recipe for you there are lots of recipes on YouTube go look for them I just mix glue a uh, baby powder and uh, acrylic white paint and I just wait for the consistency to be enough for me and my modeling paste is turned out the last batch turned so fine so I hadn't I didn't have a lot of texture uh, when I made uh, these inches and uh, two inches today I um, I've made the same thing only I've used a wall compound this is cheaper cheaper the modeling paste that you uh, buy in craft shop and of course the larger you uh, container you get it's cheaper and it lasts longer and it does the same job uh, this is from the hardware store 
so I've used the this it's for walls I've tried before also um, the same thing only for wood and it worked just fine it's the same for me it's the same thing I'm not a chemist but it worked the same so I prefer uh, from now to use this uh, thing and as I said it's cheaper so another thing after you've got your um, texture on the page and it's uh, dry you need to put uh, and some kind of medium on it I have uh, discovered the hard way the first time I tried it and it was like a year or a year and a half ago that when you come and, and want to work on uh, any kind of texture made from modeling paste with like sprays something wet and you spray it and you want to add more and more then uh, the plaster the modeling paste will just uh, get away from the page will disintegrate disintegrate I think that's the word so the, the thing is Nina showed I'll put the uh, I will remember and I will put a, a link below in the description box to Nina's uh, video so you can see what she's doing she used black gesso now I don't have ge black gesso I have white gesso that I'm making again no recipe it's only uh, water a ba baby powder talcum a glue and white acrylic and again the consistency until I like it so you can put um, if you don't have black gesso you can put white gesso and then uh, just color it with black acrylic paint why the black acrylic paint I've uh, tried it and it gives another uh, aspect to your colors that you will put on top of it that's the best I can uh, explain you can also use, not use black gesso or any kind of black paint underneath you can just use if you will do an experiment and put white gesso and black gesso or black paint and then start to building uh, your layers with uh, another uh, Paint, acrylic paints you will see the difference <coughs> I'm not a physicist uh, I've learned it when I was in the university I am studied to be a designer for the theater so there is some kind of, uh, of laws about light and how black absorbs uh, light and white reflects uh, colors so there is a difference I don't know how to explain it in English <laughs> so now I'm going to use on this is dry and I'm just go, going to use uh, on this one I'll apply acrylic black paint on the other I will apply white acrylic paint and just with a soft brush again I don't want to disturb uh, my texture I want to be gentle with it because sometimes I don't quite know how if it took uh, quite good to the page of course it will give me trouble now okay here it is white and of course you want it to dry or when you go and put another um, paint it will mix so let it dry so this is the white one going for the black one just so you can so see what happens and you need to get to all the nooks and crannies I think 
<laughs> the expression is I'll stop here it's enough for a demonstration and here I've tried it and it also works I'm going to put a black spray of um, where is it well I'll, I'll use the purple just for the demonstration this is a spray for fabric for textile it's from the cheap shop and sometimes I use it as base because it's liquid but it's not transparent so I'll just and I don't care if I have a, a little black from the brush just to spread it around and of course it's just more interesting you add more color it's more interesting and just consider this your first layer so I'm going to dry this and come back okay I'm back it's almost dry and then we are uh, going into all this uh, metallic paints now I don't have uh, a lot of metallic paint and certainly not the, what Nina had I, I have this this is for kids it's very cheap and it's not even acrylics this is gouache or tempera and as I said it's for kids but what do you know it works fantastic so that's what I've used this and this are from this uh, paint and with uh, extra from this one this is something that's called metallic finish emerald I found it uh, it's an acrylic paint and I found it at the cheap store again so basically uh, I've just taken the blue and the green and a little bit of this emerald stuff because I wanted it a bit darker than what I had and just started playing with it until I got some kind of turquoise or sea or whatever but I just played with all these colors until I got something interesting like that and I wanted them to blend I wanted all the colors but uh, not harsh uh, lines between uh, the colors I hope you can see what I'm doing and that I'm explaining myself all right so I just used what I had in the department of metallic paint. Now I'm going to do this, uh, the same thing here with the purple. Just purple and the blue. So you can see what I've done now uh, the inches uh, this the ones that I are darker if you've seen it on the, the Facebook group are just me uh, playing with the it was it wasn't even a uh, metallics I played with dark blue dark purple and um, what else did I use <laughs> uh, brown and even dark green and I just played with it and af after it got dry I added bronze and gold and that's how it came to be so the the base color is not even metallic so this is this so here is our uh, my first and it's on the white uh, paint and now I'm going here on the black just so you will see the difference 
again I'm using three uh, colors here the blue the green and the darker green that is acrylic I'll bring it closer to the camera in a minute just so you will see oops I keep adding because on the black it's not as prominent as on the white because I, I think because it's not acrylics and it's black underneath so now I'm just so we have we have something to compare I'm putting here the purple and the blue I'm using a soft brush so it will get into all the crevices so this is it and now on this one again using the same colors I hope I'm in frame So basically this is it. I'm going to uh, dry it so you can see uh, what came out of it. Then go to the layer with the gold and the bronze that give highlights to all this thing. And I hope uh, there will be still time. Uh, I want to show you about textures and not needing the stencils for this kind of project and what you can do more with it. So I'll be back. I'm back. So now we are going to highlight uh, all this stuff with the uh, gold or bronze or whatever you want. You can even use silver, what you've got. Uh, you can even uh, go not metallic. You can take black and do highlights or white. Uh, for this, I've used a uh, gold and bronze. Now this is a heavy bodied acrylics. It's a local brand, so I don't have uh, anything to tell about it that will be useful. And this one even uh, started to dry and I was so bummed about it, but now I'm excited because I'm using it mostly to, to make also texture. I like it <laughs> that it dried. Here it's still uh, smooth and here it's more like texture paste and I really like it. So it's fine by me now for the highlights I'm just putting a little on my finger and moving along until I'm satisfied with what comes out of it you can use only gold you can use both a uh, gold and bronze just make it uh, to give it more dimension like you decide one side will be bronze like all the right side here I'll put bronze and now I'll take gold and try to also blend it and highlight the left side so just play with it there is no rules to it and just play that's what that's my best advice play with it <laughs> and it doesn't has to look like mine or like Nina's it just needs to please you no but no one else so this is it let's see if I already said about black and white let's go for it I need a black heavy body acrylic and here it is a little bit let's see how it goes haven't tried it just thought about it so <laughs> let's go 
What's the worst that can happen? I think this is the mo my motto. What's the worst that can happen? I won't like it. I'll put more paint on it. Here we go. Quite dramatic, I think. Let's see with the white. If we are into experimenting, then all the way. Let's see. Now, it's just blended with the black and it's not uh, heavy bodied enough. Let's see if I have one white pot. Oops. Let's see. I really need to you to try it on a bigger scale. It looks interesting. So, as I said, play, experiment. I hope you can see what I've done. It looks a little bit uh, chaos. I like right uh, like this, but let's if I am just for showing you I'm not measuring now because I already have my inches two inches and whatever <laughs> this is a show and tell okay so basically here let's pretend it's measured and it's a inchy or inchy when it's cut down it's interesting and now you can uh, put any embellishment you want here so that is this now what I wanted to show you and uh, let's see I'll uh, arrange uh, a little bit of the table and I'll come back I'm back so what I wanted to tell you about texture and texture paste or compound uh, wall compound this is wall compound this is something i also had to learn in the university because we had to build a uh, little models of uh, the sets for the theater and we didn't have any stencils and things like brick stencil that was already made so you had to do anything uh, by yourself so here I've got my uh, watercolor paper I've got my wall compound or texture paste for that matter and now the interesting thing if you don't have stencil you start to print on it and make indentations you want bricks you start making marks that will look like bricks I am not doing it right now uh, m m measured ones I am just wanting to show you the things that you can do so and of course it was a very tiring process but this is making it your own and more interesting and I just can play and do so many stuff here with nothing I can even bring my again my fork that someone somebody laughed at me when I said that it's good for printing so laugh again I've got my trusted fork and I've got a lot of texture for it and it's interesting and I al can also take all the circles we always keep and do other stuff and it's I think it's even more interesting than all the stencils I have this is mine and I made it and I'll probably, my uh, next project will be one of my altered boxes 
and I'll show you how I am doing it so basically that's what I wanted to show you there, there are so many things that you can do to make texture and very detailed one and it doesn't have to be for the inches and twinches and trinches you can do whatever you want just play and experiment what the worst that can happen so this is it for today and i hope it was <laughs> informing so bye for now